This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. I'm Jean Wood. We will start out this weekend's racing activity at Monmouth Park. They had a uh, four-pack of stakes races for us over the weekend. We'll start on the turf for Phillies three-year-olds going a mile in the 16th in Saturday afternoon's running of the Boiling Springs. They're racing in the Boiling Springs. And a clean beginning. Strike it rich is going out to lead them early. Island Time is away running in second. In the rough is third to the outside. At the rail comes Triple Cream and then Elusive Temper in between horses. And Cosset is guided to the inside. Five lengths off the lead and just a little bit headstrong. After that comes Bay to Bay. Just around midnight, off the rail, Martita Sangrita is down on the inside, and Great Gracie Dane is the trailer as Strike It Rich and Garrett Gomez go on up front. They ran a quarter in 24 flat. They open up two and a half. Island Time on the outside is second. Triple Cream third at the rail. In the rough follows in fourth. Cossett continues to be very hard to handle on the inside. Cossett is racing six lengths off the lead. Elusive Temper is next, and then Martita Sangrita just around midnight, steadying there in between horses. On the outside comes Bay to Bay, and the trailer is Great Gracie Dane. A 48 flat half mile, just even fractions so far, but isolated fractions for Strike It Rich. She's got a two length lead as they go into the far turn. Triple Cream is in second. Island time alongside third. Cosset still right in contention, fourth along the rail. And then it's in the rough to the outside. Followed by Elusive Temper, who's got three and a half to make up. Martita Sangrita, Bay to Bay next. Just around midnight, and Great Gracie Dane. Three quarters in one, 11 and three. They're into the stretch. Strike it rich. Still on top, into the final furlong. Strike it rich, clear by three. Elusive Temper on the outside, second. And then Cosset on the inside. Late speed from Bay to Bay, but Strike it rich goes all the way in the boiling springs. Bay to Bay was second. It's close for third. Triple Cream, Martita Sangrita, and Elusive Temper. Strike It Rich gets the victory. A very nice effort by this filly who's now won three in a row. She scored in the little silver stakes here in her most recent performance on the 30th of May. She comes back here a little over three to one to score over the favored Bay to Bay who rallied very willingly from an outside position during the running of the stretch. She was the recent winner of the American Guineas setting her up for a nice try here unfortunately falling short to the pacemaker. Triple Cream rounds out the top three as she ships in from Southern California. So horses transferring in uh, to, uh, to Monmouth Park from, uh, from Arlington, Hollywood, and Delaware, running second, third, and fourth behind the locally based horse. Strike It Rich, a three-year-old daughter of unbridled song from Belle of Perrintown by DeHare, was bred in Kentucky by Stone Street Thoroughbred Holdings, owned by Waterville Lake Stable and trained by Christophe Clement, ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Strike It Rich covers the mile in the 16th and 140.25. Next up, we'll head back to Monmouth Park and Saturday's co-featured Lighthouse for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth. They're racing in the Lighthouse. And it's Malibu Prayer and Just Jenda. The two favorites broke well. Ask the Moon is out running in third. And then comes Don't Forget Guild to the outside. And then Luna Vega followed by Bon Jovi Girl. After that, Fools in Love. And the trailer is talking about love. And she's down on the inside. 13 lengths off the lead as Malibu Prayer makes the pace. Ask the Moon on the outside is second. Between those two, it's Just Jenda. These three take close order. And they're too clear of Don't Forget Gill in fourth. After that comes Luna Vega, Bon Jovi Girl to the outside. Another three and a half to Fools in Love. Talking about Love, still about 13 behind in the quarter of 24 and 1. Five furlongs to go, and now Ask the Moon's taken over. Joe Bravo and Ask the Moon a half length in front. 
Malibu Prayers second to the inside. Just Jenda right behind the leaders. Luna Vega fourth and edging up. Then Bon Jovi Girl outside of Don't Forget Gill. They ran a half in 48 and 2. Fools in Love and Talking About Love outrun so far. And now Malibu Prayer has taken over. Garrett Gomez sending Malibu Prayer to the lead as they round the far turn. Ask the Moons under pressure. Just Jenda, just outside the leaders in third. Luna Vega's traveling well enough, and here she comes. Luna Vega, now one off the rail, and oh, steadying there was Ask the Moon. Ask the Moon steadied hard. Top of the stretch, Malibu Prayer. Luna Vega comes to take her on. Just Jenda, third to the outside. It's Malibu Prayer. Something left. Luna Vega second. Then just Jenda to the outside. Malibu Prayer opening up late. And Malibu Prayer and Garrett Gomez are strong under the wire in the lighthouse sticks. Luna Vega was second, Just Jenda was third, and then talking about love. Malibu Prayer, nice to see her back on her game. Last time out, she was fifth to Hourglass in the vagrancy. I think it's fair to say she might be a little bit more effective at a root of ground, and here gets to the front without too much effort and goes gate to wire, drawing clear four and a half lengths, the better of Luna Vega with the favor, just Jenda off a win in the Mammoth Beach, completing the order of the top three. The winner, Malibu Prayer, now five for 11 lifetime, is a four-year-old daughter of Malibu Moon from Grand Prayer by Grand Slam. Bred in Virginia by Edward P. O. Edward P. Evans and owned by the breeder, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Malibu Prayer covers the mile in a 16th and 143.40. We'll head into a pair of Sunday stakes now at Monmouth Park, kicking things off. Three and up fillies and mares sprinting in the blue sparkler. They're racing in the blue sparkler and a stumble for Sarlite coming out of the gate. There goes Rated Feisty up to take the early lead. Rated Feisty to the front. Gemmelin is running in second on the inside. Then comes Sarlite, Sunday Geisha to the far outside. And Way With Words is in fifth early, three lengths off the lead. It's another two and a half back to Earl's first girl who trails them up the back stretch. Rated Feisty and Sarlite. These two up front ran a quarter in 22 and three fifth seconds. Just off the leaders, Sunday Geisha is third. Gemmelin fourth on the inside. Way With Words is not far behind and starts. Starting to move three lengths off the lead, and it's another four lengths back to Earl's first girl in the back. They round the far turn, and it's Sarlite on the outside, rated feisty along the rail. These two run a half and 45 and one, and they're into the stretch. Sarlite and rated feisty, way with words, two and a half behind them, and trying to close in with a furlong to go. Rated feisty on the inside, Sarlight. Way with words still coming. Sarlite's in front. Rated feisty on the inside. Way with words still coming, but running out of time. Sarlight, way with words on the outside. These two way with words. Got there just in time. Then Sarlite rated feisty and Earl's first girl. Photo finish. Hold all tickets. The final time, one ten and one. Way with words picks up her second consecutive victory, having won the state-bred Open Mind Stakes in her most recent performance right here at Mammoth Park. She picks up the win over Sarlight, who was shipping in from Belmont Park, where her most recent effort was a fourth to hourglass in the vagrancy. Rated Feisty completes the order of the top three. Way with words is a. A uh, bay mare, a six-year-old daughter of Sifapiano from Swiftly Tilting by Belong to Me. Bred in New Jersey by Margaret Schwartz and George Schwartz and owned by George Schwartz. Trained by Mary Epler and ridden to victory by Eddie Castro. Way with words covers the six furlongs and won 10.39. We'll head back on to the turf. This time it is three-year-old Phillies sprinting five and a half in Sunday afternoons. Crank it up, stakes. They're racing in a crank it up. Full of gut broke well. Whiny Taylor on the outside, and there goes Whoopi Kitten through at the rail now to go up and grab the lead. Greeley's Rocket is next, and then on the far outside, it's Dat Echo. Three lengths back to Ultimate Class, and Paradise Princess trails the field as they race down the back stretch. It's Whoopi Kitten in front. Whiny Taylor a half length behind, second by a length and a half. Then Greeley's Rocket. Full of gut in between horses. Dat Echo fifth on the outside. Four and a half back to ultimate class. And Paradise Princess trails and is racing wide. 
approaching the top of the stretch. It is Whoopi Kitten and Whiny Taylor turning for home one, two. Whoopi Kitten turns for home in front. Whiny Taylor, Greeley's Rocket off the rail now and moving up. Here's Greeley's Rocket up and after Whoopi Kitten. Greeley's Rocket under a full head of steam takes the lead. Whoopi Kitten back to second. Full of gut is third. It's Greeley's Rocket and Jeremy Rose running away in the crank it up. Whoopi Kitten was second and then full of gut and ultimate class. Off an impressive 10 length win at Presque Isle on the synthetic, Greeley's Rocket transfers her form to the dirt and scores by four and a quarter lengths over the favored Whoopi Kitten with full of gut completing the order of the top three at a big price. The winner Greeley's Rocket obviously handling both synthetic and the turf very nicely is a three-year-old daughter of Mr. Greeley from Clay's Rocket by American Chance, bred in Kentucky by Gulf Coast Farms Limited. Owned by Richard L. Davis and trained by Brett Calhoun, ridden to victory by Jeremy Rose, Greeley's Rocket covers the about distance of five and a half furlongs in 101.81. We'll leave Monmouth Park and we'll stay in the Mid-Atlantic. We'll head to Philadelphia Park for the Saturday stakes feature, three and up sprinting in the Donald Levine Memorial. Yeah, they're off at the Donald Levine Memorial Handicap. Cherokee Country from the inside shows first. Strasbourg is right there. Uncle Gidge from the outside. Mannington is there on the far outside. Desert Party and Riley Tucker both take back here as they make their way onto the main track. It does not appear that the pace is all that quick. Strasbourg leads the way. Strasbourg by just a length. Riley Tucker is right there with Uncle Gidge. They're together second and third as Desert Party begins to make a run between horses. Cherokee Country is gaining ground down here as the rail. And farthest out at the back is Mannington. Mannington is sixth, only two and a half back. As they now have a half mile to go and the pace is not fast at all. 23 and 2 for this group. That is very slow with three and a half furlongs to go. It will be a big time sprint to the finish now. Uncle Gidge right at the neck of Strasbourg as the tempo begins to pick up. 45 and 4 for the half. Cherokee Country has running room down inside. Desert Party stuck in behind horses. He has nowhere to go. Riley Tucker is there on the outside. Mannington has had a wide run to the top of the stretch. It's Uncle Gidge. Uncle Gidge, the first one to turn for home. Desert Party now ready to take a shot on the outside. Here comes Desert Party now with a strong surge past the eight pole. And Desert Party runs by, takes command, and quickly draws clear. Uncle Gidge second, no rally from Riley Tucker. But Desert Party just under a confident hand rod as they come down to the finish. Very impressive. Desert Party wins the Levine by three. Desert Party, good to see him back in form here in the United States. Two back, he won the Mahab El Shamal at Maidan and then was almost an inexplicably poor 11th in the Godolphin Mile last time out. He is back in the United States for uh, the Said bin Suror operation in Godolphin with Rick Matee handling things in their New York base. Nice to see him scoring off three and a half lengths, the better of Uncle Gidge, with Mannington back in third. The winner, Desert Party, was a graded stakes winner at two, a very solid three-year-old last year, and it's nice to have him continuing at the age of four. Despite his distance running pedigree, he seems to be very capable of shortening things up. He is a son of Street Cry from Sage Cat by Tabasco Cat, bred in Kentucky by David Smith and Stephen Sinatra, owned by, by Godolphin Racing, trained by Saeed Bin Soror, again, Rick Matee, settling and handling things for their New York base. Desert Party under David Cohen scores the seven furlongs of 122.04. We'll head to Churchill Downs now in two-year-old fillies and stakes racing action in the 110th running of the debutante. And they're off in the debutante. Slow to begin, Bark Hamilton and also Tater Taunter showing early dash, big sweets and to the rail, Salty Strike to the outside, Just Louise is racing in third, a length and a half away, Tristan Mee is now in fourth, Bark Hamilton is in fifth, Internet Cafe has dropped to six and Tater Taunter is at the back of the field as they dash towards the final half mile Big Sweets has got a slender lead with Salty Strike to the inside 21 seconds flat for a blistering first quarter 
to the outside. Just Louise makes a move three wide around the turn. They've now gone clear that leading trio by four lengths to Tristan Me, who is now racing in fourth, followed by Bark Hamilton, Internet Cafe, and Tater Taunter as they come towards the quarter pole in the 110th debutante. And it is now Just Louise who has taken the lead. Salty Strike is still there. Gamely rallying now to the inside rail. And it's Salty Strike who has reclaimed the lead. In second is Just Louise. Back in third and beginning to close is Tristan Me. They are dueling down inside the final 16th. Salty Strike, Just Louise, Just Louise, Salty Strike, Tristan Me on the outside. Here's the wire, Just Louise in the centre. On the inside, Salty Strike. On the outside, Tristan Me. And then back in fourth was Internet Cafe in a thrilling finish to the 110th debutante. Just Louise is now two for two. This half-sister to Sarah Louise has picked up the victory by a neck in game fashion over Tristan Me, who was in from Woodbine with Salty Strike, the favorite, off a very good debut performance last time out right here at Churchill Downs in mid-May, completes the order of the top three with the three fillies very close together. It was a long way back to the remainder of the field. Just Louise is a chestnut daughter of Five Star Day from Kings Lynn by Mount Livermore. Bred in Kentucky by Paul Gardner and owned by Eldon Farm Equine Limited, trained by Dale Romans and ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Just Louise covers the six and 111.85. We'll pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we've got a lot of great racing action. For Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at Arlington Park, where the Saturday stakes feature was for older horses sprinting on the turf. Let's head to Chicago in the Arlington Breeders' Cup Sprint. And they're off in the Arlington Sprint to an even start. And Bullet from Abroad was just best at the break. For the inside, Chamberlain Bridge is right there. Bullet from Abroad and Chamberlain Bridge. Ramon Dominguez has Sacred Journey, a well-spotted third. Then Moralist and Mambo Galliano up the fence. They move past the half-mile pole. Bullet from Abroad heads the quintet to the turn. Sacred Journey now has come to second. Jamie Terrio on the 12-time winner. Chamberlain Bridge third out the rail. A length back to Moralist and Mambo Galliano trails. The opening quarter for Bullet from Abroad on this yielding turf. 22 and 1 fifth seconds. Now in the shadow of the quarter pole. Bullet from Abroad. Sacred Journey. Chamberlain Bridge three wide. Now they turn the corner in the Arlington Sprint. Then Mumbo Galliano and Moralist. Bullet from Abroad at the rail. Chamberlain Bridge and Sacred Journey in between horses. Chamberlain Bridge has quickened in front. In the final for long. Chamberlain Bridge in front pulling away. Chamberlain Bridge from Bullet from Abroad. Sacred Journey. Moralist and Mumbo Galliano. Chamberlain Bridge is in with a win in the Arlington Sprint. Chamberlain Bridge going away from Bullet from Abroad. Moralist third, Sacred Journey, and Mumbo Galliano. Chamberlain Bridge, kind of the dean of the uh, older turf sprinters, scores the victory here, running clear by four and a half lengths as the second choice in the wagering over Bullet from Abroad with Moralist back in the third spot. Favored Sacred Journey could do no better than fourth after pressing the pace early. 
Chamberlain Bridge. At the age of six, continues to show very good form. I think it's fair to say perhaps he's not quite up to the level of Silver Timber, who beat him in his last couple of races, but last time he was a close second to that rival and obviously has a great deal of experience in the turf sprint game. Chamberlain Bridge is a Bay Gelding, a six-year-old son of war chant from She's Got Class by Trempolino. Bred in Kentucky by Eugene Melnick and owned by Carl R. Moore Management Limited, trained by Brett Calhoun, ridden to victory by Jamie Terrio. Chamberlain Bridge covers the five and a half on a yielding surface in 103.66. We will head next to Prairie Meadows, where they had their uh, big prairie racing festival over the weekend, going back to Friday evening for the first series of races. We'll start with fillies and mares sprinting in the Sailorville. Off and running. Mindy Queen, Margie Marie, one, two away from the gate. Palanca City right there with Secret Gypsy, who's actually into third. No flies in on Doodle is next up. And Simplify and Sean Bridgeman are the trailer early. And they charge up the back stretch in the Sailorville. And Margie Marie, the gray, is out on top from Mindy Queen in second. And Secret Gypsy a close up third. No flies on Doodle is next in fourth. Palanca City to the outside into a fifth. About four lengths off to lead at this point. And Simplify is the trailer around the far turn. And Margie Marie just on top from Mindy Queen, who's now going to take over the lead here. But Margie Marie tries to fight on with Secret Gypsy to the outside. And these three line up midway around the far turn. Palanca City is in fourth. No flies on Doodle. Drops back second last and simplifies the trailer. They pass the quarter pole and come for home. Mindy Queen and Secret Gypsy to the outside. And Secret Gypsy now corners into the stretch drive on top from Mindy Queen in second. Margie Marie drops back and Palanca City is next up in fourth. Final furlong and it is Secret Gypsy and Jamie Terrier now kick on for home, drawing clear for at every stride, and Secret Gypsy and Jamie Terrio going on to score nicely here in the Sailorville. Mindy Queen going to hold second, Palanca City was third, time on the board, 108.28 seconds. Secret Gypsy gets the victory here, four and three quarters of a length uh, over Mindy Queen, a big victory for Secret Gypsy, who was in after having run a good second to Dubai Majesty last time out in the winning colors at Churchill Downs. She scores over the local Mindy Queen with Palanca City, who was another horse that had run some pretty solid races against good company and was the favorite in the field of six, finishing third. Secret Gypsy is a chestnut daughter of Sea of Secrets from Miss Utada by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by Norman Cheng and owned by Richland Hill Stable and John Kuehl. Trained by Ronnie Warner and ridden to victory by Jamie Terrio. Secret Gypsy covers the six in 108.28. We'll head right back to Prairie Meadows. Next up, fillies and mares at a mile on the 16th in the Iowa Distaff. Off and running. And uh, there goes... Euphony and Cliff Berry being challenged by High Tap early. Corregas is right there in third. And along the inside, Winning Ride and Martin Garcia to join them as well. High Tap the gray, the extreme outside. Winning Ride going to skim the fence along the inside with seven furlongs to go. That puts Corregas in the third spot. And Euphony now drops back to fourth, about three lengths off the leader. High Tap for this opening quarter. And High Tap leads them on to the backstretch from Winning Ride. Now going to sit there into second. Corregas is third. And now Euphony is going to go to the inside into fourth. Now a length and a half covers the group as they settle in for their run up the back stretch with High Tap showing the way from Winning Ride in second and Corregas to the outside there with the white cap in third and Euphony continues to trail the four. Midway up the back stretch, High Tap the Gray continues the lead. Now Winning Ride, it's out a notch there in second but now High Tap fights back there from Corregas in third to the outside and Euphony in fourth. The four still covered by a length and a half. Down down to the second turn, High Tap, Winning Ride and Corregas, no change among the top three, and Euphony continues to track along into fourth. Around that far turn now, high tap and winning ride. They are still right together. Corregas is in third, and Euphony along the inside. They pass the quarter pole now and come for home in the Iowa distaff. Winning ride to the outside of high tap. Corregas has to swing three or four wide, and Euphony trying to split the top pair. They're homeward bound now. Winning ride in the center. High tap is still right there, and Euphony right between runners. Winning ride has the lead here. It's winning ride now, drawing off. Euphony trying to cling with Winning Ride and High Tap is back to third. It comes down to Winning Ride and Euphony and now Winning Ride draws clear in the late stages to win the Iowa Distaff under Martin Garcia. Euphony was second and High Tap checked in third. Time on the board, 142.77 seconds. Winning Ride, another horse. It's kind of nice to see her back. She scores over a short field of only four fillies picking up the win over Euphony and High Tap. 
And this is a horse that had been a pretty nice three-year-old filly out on the West Coast last year, shipped in for the Alabama last year to uh, very little avail, and then went to the sidelines. She returned in an allowance race at Santa Anita, scoring, that was two races back, and then was a close-up second in the Milady last time out. Now at the age of four, it does appear that uh, this daughter of Candy Ride is back in very good form for uh, trainer Bob Baffert, who, as we know, is not afraid to ship horses out of town and pick up victories. He obviously had a nice weekend with uh, Winning Ride kicking things off. Winning Ride is a chestnut daughter of Candy Ride from Winard by Mr. Greeley. Bred in Ontario, Canada by Winsong Farm and owned by Arnold Zetcher Limited. Trained by Bob Baffert, ridden to victory by Martine Garcia. Winning Ride covers the mile in the 16th and 142.77. Next up, older horses going short in the Iowa Sprint. Off and running. Attaboy Roy, easy dreamer along the inside. Now Majestic Perfection rushes through between horses. So too does Cash Refund. Majestic Perfection is out on top. Cash Refund is chasing in second. Attaboy Roy to the outside is a close-up third up the back stretch. Peaceful Rain along the inside and fourth. There's Humble Destin in between horses and fifth. Just two lengths off the lead at this point. American Classic is second last. An easy dreamer is the trailer. Down to the far turn. Majestic Perfection just on top here from Cash Refund. Continue Continues to chase in second. Attaboy Roy is racing in the clear in third. Two and a half lengths off the lead. Peaceful Rain. Humble Destin is next up. Followed up by American Classic. And Easy Dreamer continues to trail. They pass the quarter pole and come for home now. Majestic Perfection and Cash Refund. One, two into the stretch drive. And next up, Attaboy Roy. Three wide there as they come down the lane. And still on top, it's Majestic Perfection. In fact, lengthens this lead through the final furlong. Attaboy Roy chasing in second. Cash Refund drops back third with Peaceful rain and they come to the wire and it is majestic perfection and sean bridge mahan to win it clear attaboy roy was second cash refund was third very tight for fourth time on the board 107.24 seconds 107.2 and race that's yielded some pretty interesting sprinters including benny the bull a couple of years ago this looks like a very very interesting horse to keep your eye on majestic perfection dueled in the early going, was able to put horses away, opened up four at the top of the stretch, and when they started to come running at him, he just held sway without ever really being asked to run all that hard scoring by almost five over Attaboy Roy, with Cash Refund, a perfectly capable runner at five to two, completing the order of the top three. Majestic Perfection making his stakes debut, a winning one is now four for five lifetime. His only career defeat having come in his first career start is in out of a very sharp allowance performance at Churchill in the middle of May. And uh, now looks like a horse to keep your eye on in the sprint game as we move into the latter part of the year. Majestic Perfection is a four-year-old son of Harlan's holiday from Act So Noble by Wavering Monarch. Bred in Kentucky by Ronald G. McPeak and Shane Floyd, owned by Padua Stable, trained by Steve Asmussen, and ridden victory by Sean Bridgemahan. Majestic Perfection sets the new track record in the running of the Iowa Sprint, covering the six furlongs in 107.24. We'll head into Saturday evening's racing action now from Prairie Meadows and kicking things off. We have three-year-old fillies in the Iowa Oaks. Off and running! Shotgun Gulch from the outside fires out of there, but now there goes seeking the title and Calvin Burrell to take the lead. All due respect is right there also. Quiet temper along the inside with Remit as they head into the first turn here. And Shotgun Gulch was at top at the start, but has now faded back to the trailing position. Around the clubhouse turn and all due respect out on the lead here from seeking the title, the inside, Harissa to the outside. Those two do battle for second and third. Quiet Temper is next in fourth, laying about four lengths off the lead at this point. Remit is second last and Shotgun Gulch is at the back of the field. They settle in for their run up the back stretch and all due respect. And Mike Smith out on the lead here by a length and a half from Harissa who is sitting there into second. Quiet Temper is next in the third spot. Followed up by seeking the title there along the inside. Remit is second last. And the trailer at the back, it is Shotgun Gulch. They just went past the half mile pole there into the far turn. Continuing to lead it is all due respect from Harris in second. Now there goes Quiet Temper for the first run there to the outside. Seeking the title still along the inside. Three from the top. Remit is second last and Shotgun Gulch is the trailer. Continuing around the far turn and all due respect is still on top here. Harissa continuing to chase in second. Quiet Temper is next in 
third and seeking the title along the inside. They hit the top of the stretch and all due respect is still on top. Harissa now on the grandstand side and switching to the outside is seeking the title. Seeking the title but it is Harissa in the center. All due respect drops back a bit and Quiet Temper is next and fourth. It's seeking the title there to the outside of Harissa and these two come to the wire together. Seeking the title Harissa. Seeking the title goes on to score the Iowa Oaks from Arissa in second. All due respect finishes up in third. Time on the board, 141.84 seconds. Seeking the title, another horse that's been a little bit of a hard luck filly. She was a good third in the fairgrounds, Oaks, behind Quiet Temper. Followed that up with a layoff, come, came back in the black-eyed Susan. She was involved in that spill that day when she was running at 5-2. to two. It was sixth in a, in a difficult acorn. It was a tightly packed field of horses, and she just never seemed to get into a position to make a run. Nice to see her back in the winner's circle at a pretty nice price as she scores by a half over Harissa, who was in from Pimlico with Hollywood shipper All Due Respect completing the top three. The winner seeking the title is a three-year-old daughter of Seeking the Gold from Title Seeker by Monarcos. Bred in Kentucky by Charles Fipke and owned by the breeder, trained by Dallas Stewart and ridden to victory by Calvin Borrell. Seeking the title covers the mile in the 16th and 141.84. Next up, three-year-olds in the Grade 3 Iowa Derby. Off and running. And forestry type fires right out of there to take the lead with a lap to go. Concord Point, Martin Garcia to the outside in second. Winslow Homer is in third there with Vow to Wager along the inside. This guy has no limit as second last. And bringing up the rear is down with Dixie. Seven eights to go. And forestry type out on the front end here. A length and a half from Concord Point. Who's going to sit second? Winslow Homer to the outside racing into third. And Vow to Wager is in fourth. They're strung out here with six furlongs to go. Then this guy has no limit is second last. And at the back of the field is Down Wit Dixie. They straighten away for their run up the back stretch in the Iowa Derby, and Forestry Type shows the way. Concord Point continues to sit second, and Winslow Homer in the clear in third. Vow to Wager is next in fourth, has about six lengths to make up. Three clear of this guy has no limit, and Down Wit Dixie is trailing the field. Four furlongs from the finish. Forestry Type, Concord Point puts a little pressure now on this leader, and the top pair are still clear by three and a half. Winslow Homer is next in third. Vow to Wager is in fourth. This guy has no limit, and uh, Down Wit Dixie continues to trail the Iowa Derby field and we have a new leader in Concord Point and now Concord Point now kicks on for home at about two furlongs left back to second forestry type then it's Winslow Homer this guy has no limit closing up three from the top they hit the top of the stretch the leader continues to be Concord Point three sixteenths from the finish it's Concord Point clear down the center this guy has no limit is in second and Winslow Homer is third final furlong coming up and it's Concord Point on top this guy has no limit and a late charging down with Dixie but they're in deep stretch Stretch, and it is all Concord Point and Martin Garcia cruising in to win the Iowa Derby. This guy has no limit, was second. Finishing in third was Winslow Homer. Time on the board, 1 minute 40.37 seconds. Concord Point, another kind of interesting three-year-old to keep your eye on. He certainly got the right connections as he scores off by a handy eight and a half lengths throttled down by Martin Garcia. The sky has no limit, completes the order of the, of the exacta, with Winslow Homer, the favorite in the field, unable to keep pace in the early going and settling for a non-impactful third place finish in his first start back off of a layoff. This is the horse that you may remember having won, I believe it was the Holy Bull at Gulfstream Park in late January. Looked like kind of an interesting horse when he beat Jackson Ben that day. Went to the sidelines. This was only his first start back, so I certainly would give him plenty of opportunities to improve prove off of this race, but take nothing from the winner. A very interesting colt with a lot of future in front of him. The winner, Concord Point, had won his debut back on December 26th at Santa Anita. And of course, that is opening day at Santa Anita. And those two-year-old maiden races that they run that day are often very loaded races. That's a kind of a destination date that a lot of trainers mark in their calendar. And as such, those races are extremely competitive. He came back off of that race with a sprint allowance race, finishing fourth, and then went to the sidelines. He won an allowance in his return and then was a good second last time out in the Barrera to a good horse named Smiley. Smiling Tiger. 
Now, this was his first time growing a root of ground. He had never stretched out to two turns before, but obviously handles things with considerable ease. Concord Point is a gray son of Tappet from Havre de, de Grasse by Boston Harbor. Bred in Kentucky by Lee McMillan and Ed Rudley. Owned by Kaleem Shaw and trained by Bob Baffert. Ridden to victory by Martin Garcia. Concord Point covers the mile in the 16th and 140.37. Next up, older horses going a mile and a furlong in the Prairie Meadows Corn Husker Breeders' Cup. There's the start from Tom Benjamin, often running in the Corn Husker. King Dan and Racing Bran, one, two out of the gate. Shadow Beat dancing to the outside is racing up into third. Mythical Power is a close up fourth, as well as Slew's Tizzy along the inside. Red Lead is next up. The first flight have drawn off from Golden Yank, followed up by Going Ballistic, second last. And the trailer at the back of the field is Brass Hat. Through the opening quarter here, less than seven furlongs to go. And Racing Brand is out on the front end from King Dan. There in second, Slew's Tizzy along the inside in third. And Shadow Be dancing to the outside. Then after that, it is Red Lead, about four from the top as they straighten away for their run up the back stretch. Mythical Power is next up, followed by Golden Yank, a long way back to going ballistic. And one right at the back is Brass Hat and Calvin Burrell. They're the midway point of the back stretch in this year's Cornusker. And Racing Brand continues to show the way from King King Dan in second. Shadow Bee dancing to the outside is in third. And Slew's Tizzy along the inside and in fourth. They're bunching up now. Then it is Red Lead, Mythical Power, and Golden Yank to the outside with the white cap. Going Ballistic and Brass Hat are still a long way back around the second turn. And it's Racing Brand still on top. King Dan is in the center. And Shadow Bee dancing three wide as they approach the top of the stretch. Mythical Power is right in between horses. Red Lead going to look for room along the inside. And Golden Yank is there as well. They're homeward bound now and Shadow Bee dancing in the center. Racing Brand is still there along with toward the extreme outside Golden Yank. They come down to the final furlong and it's Shadow Bee dancing is just on top. Racing Brand along the inside is second. Golden Yank and Mythical Power are next. They come down to the final 16th and Shadow Bee dancing and Eddie Razo, a junior from Racing Brand. Shadow Bee dancing wins it. Racing Brand was second, Golden Yank was third, Mythical Power was fourth, and this year's Perry Meadows Cornusker handicap goes to Shadow Bee Dancing and Eddie Razo Jr. in a time of 1 minute 48.24. Shadow Bee Dancing, one of the uh, mainstays on the Midwest circuit, was a solid second in his prep for this, the Rasmussen, earlier this year. Very nice performance by this guy to score by a length over Racing Bran, horse that we'd seen in a couple of Midwest races earlier in this year, including a couple of good races down at Oaklawn. Lone Star shipper Golden Yank completes the order of the top three. Shadow Bee Dancing, now three for four this year, is a bay son of Montbrook from Deputy's Mistress by Deputy Minister. Bred in Florida by Ocala Stud and owned by RNB Racing, trained by Terrell Gore and ridden to victory by Eusebio Razzo. Shadow Be Dancing covers the 9 and 148.24. We'll pause for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading north of the border to Woodbine, then returning to the States with racing from California and New York. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now in Toronto, the Toronto area at Woodbine Racecourse, where on Saturday we had three, or I'm sorry, two-year-old fillies, two-year-old fillies in action in the My Deer Stakes. They're off. Mimi's Missy and the final Mesa. To the extreme outside, where did she go? Then where's the bedroom and down toward the rail is Canadian Lady as they sprint up the back stretch and it's final Mesa in between horses. To the inside is Mimi's Missy. To the outside, where did she go? Just in behind that the trio is where's the bedroom? Then Canadian Lady as they run through the turn, 22 and one for that opening quarter. And it's a final Mesa and to the outside now. Where did she go? They lock horns at the quarter pole. In behind them is a Mimi's a Missy. Where did she go on the outside into the inside? Final Mesa, final Mesa has did away with where did she go? Final furlong. And it's final Mesa ran a half and 45 and one. She could be any kind. She's three for three lifetime. And she destroys them in the My Dear. Where did she go? Was second and Mimi's Missy third. Final Mesa picks up her third consecutive victory, running away and hiding seven and three quarters the lengths of better of where did she go, who was asking just that as Final Mesa ran away. Mimi's Missy completes the order of the top three. Now three for three off a Keeneland Maiden special and a win in the Polly Drummond last time out at Delaware Park. Final Mesa, a very nice looking early two-year-old daughter of Sky Mesa from Final Style by Smart Style was bred in New York by Carmine Telesca and John Guerrera. Owned by Wesley Ward, trained by Wesley Ward and ridden the victory by I. Barcoa. Final Mesa covers the five furlongs in 57.22. Pair of stakes on Sunday afternoon at Woodbine. We'll start things out with three year olds in the Victoria Park stakes. They're off in the Victoria Park stakes. And XC broke running. XC to take the early lead. Castellano gathers back a gold medallion. And to the inside is Bears Hard 10 as they move in front of us for the first time. And it's XC taking this field to the clubhouse turn. Bears Hard 10. Is hot on his heels in a second position. Gold Medallion has uh, found the rail into the outside as a uh, village drive as they run through the first turn. 24 seconds for the opening quarter mile. And it's Exe who will try to go it all the way on the front end. Long, powerful strides with six furlongs to go. And it's Exe by length and a half. Bears hard tennis second down to the inside. A gold medallion is third and two and three quarter lengths off the lead. The gold medallion's outside is a village drive and Exe got that opening half mile in 47 and four. Alvarado took a peek back and sees Bears hard ten a length and a half in arrears. Gold medallion in a third position. Village drive is fourth and three lengths off the lead of Exe as they run into the far turn. And it's Exe now just by a length. Bears hard tens trying to inch closer. Moves within a half a length now. Exe got three quarters and 12 and a tick. And it's Exe coming to the quarter pull. Kicks on again. Widens to a length and a quarter. Rosa da Silva all over. Bears hard ten trying to get him to keep up. Down in third is gold medallion. Then we have a village drive. They're at the top of the stretch. And Exe is widened to five lengths. Through on the inside is gold medallion. Bears Hard 10 has weakened Village Drive toward the inside. They come to the last 16th. A stroll in the park by Exe. Total domination to win the Victoria Park. Gold Medallion was second. Bears Hard 10 third and Village Drive fourth. Exi, who obviously likes the synthetic very well, he won the rush away earlier this year at Turfway and has now won two stakes at Woodbine, scores the victory running off by eight lengths over Gold Medallion with Bears Hard 10, rounding out the top three. The winner Exi, a son of Maria's Mon from Soldera by Polish Numbers, was bred in Kentucky by Wertheimer and Frere and is owned by the Breeders, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Exi covers the mile and a furlong, 150.60. 
Next up, older horses in the King Edward Breeders' Cup, $300,000 mile on the turf, a Canadian grade two. They're off in the King Edward Stakes. Strike again, and to the outside, Ra, he's attorney. Get Stormies to their inside, Grand Adventure to the extreme outside, and those four squabble for the early lead. And it's Grand Adventure who's the widest. Get Stormy. Strike again's gathered back now, and Jimmy Sims improves at the rail. Ice Bear's tucked in nicely in fifth, just a length and a half off the lead, though. Then we have Cherokee Heaven, Rahir's attorneys, a clear of trouble on the far outside and just two lengths from the front. Then Society's chairman who's settled into stride, and Monty's best is the early trailer, 24-2 and two for that opening quarter, and they head into the turn, a tight bunch. Jimmy Sims clings to the rail. Get Stormy between horses. The Cannot Cup winner. Grand Adventure is on the extreme outside. Third and just a long neck off the lead. 47 and 4 for that opening half mile. And Get Stormy comes on in the center now. Grand Adventure is poised to pounce on the outside. Jimmy Sims is trying to keep up with the rail. Rahi's attorney. Ice Bears drafted in behind horses throughout. And there are two furlongs out in the King Edward, and Grand Adventure comes on and takes the lead. And it's Grand Adventure. Rahi's attorney gets Stormy's trying to fight on, but he appears beaten. Ice Bear is in behind horses. Grand Adventure, the heart of a lion. Rahi's attorney on the outside. Then Ice Bear, and it's Grand Adventure. And Patrick Husband's Grand Adventure, an outstanding effort to win the King Edward. Rahi's attorney was second, and Ice Bear third. Grand Adventure pulls off a bit of an upset in here, in my opinion, because Rahi's attorney was a horse that I liked quite a bit, was not quite able to get to him, finishing second with Ice Bear. Rounding out the top three favorite in the field was Get Stormy, in from a nice performance at Mammoth last time out, had to settle for fourth after being involved in the early pace. The winner, Grand Adventure, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old son of Grand Slam from Valmarie by Coronado's Quest. Bred in Kentucky by Gulf Coast Farms Limited, known by Samson Farm, trained by Mark Frostad, and ridden to victory by Patrick Husbands. Grand Adventure covers the mile on the Woodbine Turf in 136.40. We will head out to the West Coast now for a pair of stakes races from Hollywood Park, kicking things off on Saturday afternoon. The Beverly Hills for fillies and mares on the turf, a mile and a quarter of the distance, grade three, the condition. They're off. Perfect start. Turning top and Princess Taylor shows speed. Pretty Catherine is keen to go on early to the outside Lady Francesca. Restless Soul and Princess Haya are next, then Catsalot, and the early trailer is general consensus. Princess Taylor with one lap to go, and she's got the lead by three lengths from Turning Top and Pretty Catherine, who are content to sit snugly in hand second and third. Restless Soul gallops fourth, and she's about five off the lead. Princess Haya is at the rail with six to come. Lady Francesca just outside of her. General consensus is second to last and about 10 now behind because Princess Taylor is five in front at the clubhouse turn and Catsalot is the trailer as they turn into the backstretch. In the 45th, Beverly Hills handicap and Princess Taylor is an aggressive leader now. Long shot Princess Taylor has opened up a six length margin on turning top who is content to sit right there in second for Brice Blanc. Pretty Catherine just outside of her. Restless Soul is fourth and about seven or eight off the lead. Lady Francesca has nine to come. General Consensus and Princess Haya are 11 lengths behind and the trailer is Catsalot as they head up the back stretch. Princess Taylor to the half mile marker. She is now only four and a half lengths in front of Turning Top who travels comfortably in second. Pretty Catherine is third. Here's the first move from the back of the pack. It's Lady Francesca and Lady Francesca going to go up three wide. Restless Soul goes with her. Princess Haya stays at the rail. She's now four from the lead. Then comes General Consensus. Could be wide but has momentum. Catsalot is the trailer and Princess Taylor now only leads by a length from turning top in second. Lady Francesca third. Restless Soul just in behind them. Princess Haya in the red cap comes out for the drive. Two and a half off the lead. General Consensus still four lengths behind and turning top and Princess Taylor come to the final 16th. Princess Taylor inside, turning top outside, turning top puts her head in front. Princess Taylor, restless soul, four in a row, turning top, yes! 
And now a graded stakes winner, Turling Top, wins the 45th Beverly Hills from Princess Taylor. Restless Soul finished third. Turning top gets the victory here, and it seems to me like I remember this race as being a grade one only a few years ago, but it looks like the Southern California uh, turf fillies are not quite as sharp as they once were. The pace out here very, very leisurely on a firm turf course. Turning top sits just off the pacemaker Princess Taylor and pounces to score by a length Princess Taylor after going 25.55, 49.83, and 114.52 is well able to hold on at 16 to 1 to the second spot with Restless Soul, stalking from just off the pace and settling for third. The winning winner turning top has now won four in a row, having won the restricted Redondo Beach most recently. She loves this course. She's three for three at Hollywood. Turning top is a dark bay or brown daughter of Pivotal from Pietra Dura by Cadu Genro, bred in Ireland by Baruch Stud, known by Michael Tabor, trained by Simon Callahan, and ridden to victory by Brice Blanc. Turning top covers the mile and a quarter in 201.69. Next up, we'll head on to the turf on Sunday afternoon. Older sprinters in the Curlin Memorial. They're off. Unzip me broke like a shot and immediately goes for the front. My summer slew away well, but not as quick as Unzip me who crosses and clears. Who cares about the seven hole? She's at the rail before the elbow. Stoneside, Noble Court, Kayambi, and Kelly Leak are next, and the trailer is the Australian Scenic Blast. The Philly Unzip me up the backstretch, a length in front of My Summer Slew in second. It's a similar margin to Noble Court, three deep in the pink cap, Stoneside at the rail. Kelly Leak is fifth and four from. The front running unzip me at the rail goes Kayambi. Scenic Blast still at the back of the pack and now seven lengths behind unzip me and my summer slew. Unzip me to the quarter pole. Three quarters of a length in front of my summer slew in second. Stoneside moves through at the rail. Blue and white and two and a half off the lead. Kelly Leak and Noble Court and they come to the top of the stretch. Unzip me gets away. She is now two lengths in front of my summer slew. Stoneside is coming after her. So is my summer slew. Who could still do it? Unzip me just in neck. My Summer Slew right alongside and has taken over the lead. My Summer Slew is going to win the Robert K. Cullen. My Summer Slew a length. Stoneside got into second. Um, zip me third. Maybe Scenic Blast from last for fourth. My Summer Slew picking up the win. A very nice effort by this guy by a game. Three quarters of a length over Stoneside. It was a nose back to Unzip Me, the pacemaker in here. Uh, Unzip Me a little bit sharp in the early going, although considering this was a California turf sprint. Granted, it's not on the downhill course, but still they went a little bit slow for these type of horses. 23.32 being the opening fraction when they finally picked up the game. It was a little late for Scenic Blast, who was coming in from shot in. He made his last effort uh, running for about a $1.5 million purse in the, uh, in the Hong Kong Sprint. He transferred to the United States after having uh, respiratory problems that, uh, that caused him to have some bleeding. They did uh, treat him with Lasix, but he was not able, you see him with the big white nose, was not able to quite make up enough ground as he quickened. That was about the same time that the entire race quickened, and uh, obviously it was a little bit of a disadvantage for him, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this international Group 1 winner, Scenic Blast, improve a little bit next time out. However, we've got nothing to take away from the winner. My Summer Sluice had a perfect trip and was game in victory. He is a dark bear brown gelded son of Siberian Summer from My Bouquet by Sloopy. Bred in California by Nick Carfascia and owned by the breeder. Trained by Craig Delasi and ridden to victory by Alonso Quinones. My Summer Sluice covers the six furlongs in the Robert K. Curlin Memorial on the grass in 108.40. We'll head back home to New York, the Grade 1 Mother Goose at the new distance of a mile and a sixteenth. And they're off for the Mother Goose. Biofuel missed the break. Connie and Michael and Katie now racing for the lead from their outside post. Devil May Care comes away third. Ayla Leah to her inside is very keen to go on now. And Edgar Prado trying to harness some of her speed. Ayla Lee is settled back in fourth position. And after that slow start, Bio fuels the trailer. So Katie now leads the way. Connie and Michael second. And Devil May Care, Johnny Velasquez keeps her out of harm's way. Well in the clear on the outside and well in hand is Devil May Care. 
The pace is snappy here. 22 and 4 was the opening quarter. Katie now and Connie and Michael 1 2. Devil May Care is sitting outside and running along in third. Ayla Lee is far more settled now. She's fourth toward the inside. Biofuel is the fifth of five as the field enters the far turn now. Katie now still holding that lead. The half was a strong 45 and two fifth seconds. Connie and Michael turning up the pressure. Devil May Care unhurried yet close to the lead on the outside. And then it's Biofuel who's following Devil May Care around the far turn. Ayla Lea comes to an opening on the inside. And now they're coming to the top of the stretch. Katie Now and Devil May Care. Devil May Care just cruising up to Katie Now. And Ayla Lea comes through on the inside. Biofuel from the far outside. Off the turn now and into the stretch. And it is Devil May Care. Johnny Velasquez steals a peek to see that biofuel could be a threat here. And Connie and Michaels resurgent now third toward the inside. And it's Devil May Care holding firm to that lead. Connie and Michael down inside on the outside. Biofuel. They're coming down to the finish. And Devil May Care did it. Did it by a length on the wire. Connie and Michael ran a strong second here. And biofuel was third. Devil May Care off of her performance 10th place finish in the Kentucky Derby last time out runs her record to four for seven lifetime with a solid victory from just off the pace really never looking like she was asked scoring by a length and a quarter under John Velasquez over Connie and Michael with biofuel making her usual rally from well back off the pace to complete the order of the top three. The winner Devil May Care is a three-year-old Bay Philly a daughter of Malibu Moon from Kelly's Ransom by Red Ransom. Bred in Kentucky by Diamond A Racing Corporation and owned by the Glen Crest Farm Limited, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Devil May Care covers the mile in a 16th in the Grade 1 Mother Goose at Belmont in 142.06. That'll wrap up the Busy Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. You know next week's program is going to be very busy, so you'll want to be able to catch it. It's going to include a busy holiday weekend's worth of stakes racing action from all across the country. So be sure you know you don't miss a next week's edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to see us again next time. I'm Jean Wood, and in the meantime, have a great week at the races.